do you feel like, you know, in this game of basketball, everything everything is based off height. You know, we see somebody 6'5", walk in the yeah. gym, you know, we automatically yeah. think they're they good. You right. know, but then we see a player like you who, who who's not as tall, and we kind of look past you. You got to show us more. Right. You know, the person, the, the person that's six six, we always say, "Oh, they got potential." You're right. You know right, what right, I mean? Right. We all, yeah, they got potential. Yeah. Do you feel like you get a fair shake Man. being the stature that you are? No, not at all. Not at all. Like I don't pass the eye test at all. Like even on some of these visits, people would be surprised I'm on visits. Like they're just looking at me <laughs> like, hmm? "Like you coming here, type?" Like, you're like yeah, dude. But I mean, honestly, that's what I like about it, though. Like people don't really look at, you know, smaller guards um, too highly because of our height. They don't think we can do as much. But that's what makes us so special because, you know, certain of us have that dog in us that just want to prove it. You know what I mean? Like, if we have that opportunity, like, if we just – if y'all just if, – if if people just give us the opportunity, we're going to prove it. You feel me? Like, that's all we need, though. Yeah, see, and, and I think there's, like, you know, a few undersized guards that, you know – have that level like you like you know you have Sharif Cooper and oh yeah Tyler Ulis like only a few come around every so often I feel yeah. like you're arguably probably the next guy in line you know especially mm -hmm. with the offers that you that you do have do you think like there's a ceiling as a player that size do you think you have like a cap as far as potential yes I feel like if you're not mm -hmm. six six potential runs out it's all about producing at that point um you know what I mean because at, at the end of the day, it's about how can you help us win? How can you benefit us? And yeah. for a player that's not going to – for a guy that's not going to grow to be 6'6", six, six, potential runs out when you touch high school. Like, because, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, your height runs out, everything like that. You're not as long. They can't use you the same way as they can use somebody that's 6'6". Six, six. So unless you prove it and unless you produce, that's the only way you gain some respect and get that respect. So – for smaller guards, we just got to go out and just prove it. Yeah, <laughs> and that was that was a hell of an answer <laughs> because <laughs> anybody else you would have asked that question, they would have said, "Ain't no sky, ain't, ain't no limit to me. I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> you know, they don't keep it real. They they they, they kind of unrealistic, yeah. you know, with this." Yeah, I feel you, but yeah, I mean, like that's the facts, though. Like they they people can't look at us and say, "Oh yeah, he can do the same stuff that you know Julian Phillips can give us." You feel me? Like that's not yeah. facts. I can right. give you. A fast-paced game. I can give you, you know, somebody that's gonna run your team. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna give you the length and you know what I mean that that type of athleticism. I'm just not. But yeah. you know, it's all good. So can, can you see yourself, you know, in the NBA one day? Do you see yourself playing overseas? Mm -hmm. I feel like I see myself if I just keep going, and keep producing, and keep showing people that I'm a winner, even at my size, and keep the dog mentality. I feel like I, I can be a pro. I feel mm -hmm. like I will be a pro. Um, right now I feel like I will be a pro, but I feel like if I just keep working and keep the dog mentality and just show people I'm a winner, even at the high level with, you know, my college, uh, choice, um, I feel like I can be in the NBA if I just keep working though. Yeah. You just have to be, your offense in my opinion has to be so good to where like it can kind of overlap the defensive liability. Like, I think that's why guys like Trey Young are still in the league and Steph Curry because yeah. their offense is so good. So, so I think mean, that nice guard, like that's kind of how you have to look at it in a way. For sure. Like with us smaller guards, defense has to be, and that's what I realized this past year. Like yeah. Peace Jam, the EYBL session or the EYBL as a whole was my first time having a steal stat. Like I never had a steal stat. I almost averaged two steals a game. So it's mm -hmm. like being a smaller guard, it really like being there at link and what Mo can has showed me, like, if you're going – with your height, you have to defend. Like, no matter what, you got to put pressure on the ball. You got to make somebody feel you. You know what I mean? Somebody has to pay attention to you at some point when you're on the defensive end. So, mm -hmm. defense has to be a major key, especially if you want to get to the NBA. Um, You know, that's, that's, that's major. Yeah. So, did you feel some type of way when, like, these other teams were game planning against you since – because, you know, the game is all about mismatches. So, they're going right. to try – to attack the mismatch. Like, did you feel some type of way about that? I just felt like I was doing something right. You feel me? <laughs> Coming off the bench. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, those guys had the game plan and everything like that. Um, But it made – it helped me because it helped me see the game differently. Like, oh, so the way somebody had guards me or face guards me, you know, I have to work to get open. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's like it's different ways and different assets of your game that you have to grow. 
and depend it can you know show up in a game um you know so how people defend me and game plan me it helps me understand get a better understanding for when i go to college and if that happens you know yeah, i'll be prepared for it because i mean i've seen it before yes yeah, so like what what do you think is like the secret to like succeed as an undersized guard like is there something <laughs> in practice that you that your trainers do to be able to like see over the defense or make specific passes like overhead or bounce pass like how did you kind of gain that like sort of level of IQ and be able to see the floor like you do honestly um playing the game I've always played up um even younger like I was in elementary I was in like fourth grade playing against seventh and eighth graders like I've always played up so just playing the game like just constantly play it don't even matter like go to the park play pick up a few times get some good runs in and just play the game yeah. because that's how you get to feel the game like you know there's you can you can get better with cones and you know on air but with a defender in front of you you have to really like understand and really like break down and in, in everything like that like understand game time situations understand certain situations iq you know what i mean like all that develops when you're a small guard. All that has to be at a at a ten because, you know, like your teammates. I mean, I learned this. I can't talk to some people the way I can talk to other people. Like with some yeah. people, they'll take things, you know, more personal than others may. You know what I mean? Like my dad taught me because you know he played quarterback. A lot of times you can't talk like this. It's like this. Palms down. You know, like calm your players down. Um, try to get them and get y'all on the same page. You know, it's with the game being played, um, emotions are high because we want to win. We're all competitors. So yeah. it's just, you know, as the point guard and as, as a quarterback or whatever, as a leader, you got to learn how to adjust your tone and, and learn how to talk to certain players. So just being a good high IQ type of guard, that's what puts us over the top. Yeah. Uh, Right, go ahead, Deirdre. Hey, I, uh, first of all, I want to apologize for anybody listening. I'm in the trenches, unfortunately. So if you heard some sirens, you know you're going you're going to hear that. You're going to hear that from time to time. That happens around here, man. Yeah, I'm not bragging about it. It's just 